Dolan Show on Talk Radio. A fascinating book is out now. It's called Who Poisoned Your Bacon Sandwich? Uh, let's have a look at this. Every million, every sorry, every week, millions of us eat bacon and ham in particular, which are treated with carcinogenic nitro additives. The main form of cancer at stake here is colorectal cancer, the second um, most uh, deadly cancer in the UK. These additives are not needed to colour meat. They're not needed to make it safe. Yet, meat packing companies across the West have continued to use them and deny the links between these additives and cancer. Let's speak to the author of this book that's making a lot of noise. Delighted to welcome uh, Guillaume Coudre, author of Who Poisoned Your Bacon Sandwich. Hi, Guillaume. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. So um, tell me, uh, for example, in a normal bacon sandwich, what the particular additive of concern is on the bacon? In a bacon sandwich, most of the time you would find nitrite, sodium nitrite. Sometimes you could also find in some other kind of a cold cut, you could find nitrate with an A. But the most common in bacon is nitrite with an I. And, and is nitrite better than nitrate or are they both bad? No, they're the same, basically. You know, you can use one or, or another depending on what kind of process you want to to, uh, to conduct, whether it's, uh, I mean, it's very technical. You know, you can have dry cured meats, you can have uh, sausages, you can have bacon. There is an whole array of different products for which you use different kind of nitrite or nitrate. But basically the chemical reaction is the same and the risk is the same. Indeed. Now, are you familiar with a particular range of bacon made by a company called Finibrog, Naked Bacon? Yeah, they do. They, 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 they have stopped uh, using nitrite. Actually, I think they started uh, producing bacon when they found a technology uh, whereby they could not, they would not use nitrite, and the same technology is used in France by uh, Erta. Uh, you know this, and uh, they make yes. um, uh, ham. So it's one of the technique of the technologies that enables avoiding using nitrite altogether. Well, let me tell you that I have uh, Finnebrogue bacon every morning. I do not own shares in the company. <laughs> this is not a sponsored interview, uh, but it's called Naked Bacon. I give it to my kids because it doesn't have these nit nitrites, nit nitrates. Yeah, sure. um, and then you mentioned Herta, which is great news. That's a, a brand I also consume. How it proves, therefore, that we do not need these additives. So why are they in our meats? The they are most, you know, for the, the, the fact that they are carcinogenic has been known for decades, decades, since the first, uh, like, uh, very solid proof was obtained already in the early 70s. And already in the early 70s, there was plans for a total ban in the US. The FDA and the US Department of Agriculture devised a plan to ban nitro additives because of cancer risk, because they, they generate three kinds of carcinogenic compounds, which are namely nitrosoamines, or we can call them nitrosamines, or nitrosoamides, and we call them nitrosoamides, or even, uh, you know, more tricky, the nitrosyl M. It's an uh, iron that is in the meat that reacts with the nitro compounds and generates carcinogenic uh, material. And so why, you ask Mark, why are they still in the food we serve? Basically, because enorm some enormous meat industry groups, uh, lobbyists, essentially in the, in the US, but also they had strong relays worldwide, have been fighting regulation, preventing the ban, avoiding having to retool because if you if you if you for um, if you don't use nitrite you have to put more work you have to spend more time when you when you let's say when you make a dry cure ham it takes th uh, approximately three times longer if you make parma ham parma ham is made without nitrite on uh, nitrate and you have to take three times more time to make some parma ham than if you make let's say some uh, uh, cheap uh, dry cured ham that you can produce in three months. So it's it all amounts to um, a, a will from the meat industry to save money, to have a longer shelf life, to cut corners, let's say in the production, because 
you can get a very nice color for a very cheap price, you know. It is very advantageous for the producers. And it's really, Extremely advantageous. It's really strange because, for example, a lot of sausages do not contain these nitrates. They don't. And let's say you don't find nitrites in, uh, in pudding, in black pudding. So huh. why, why, is, it, why to... is it focused on bacon? Is it cosmetic because of the pink color of the meat? Very much so. Very much so. And the reason, but they would, manufacturers who use that for cosmetic reasons would never say that uh, they use that for cosmetic re reason. And as you said before, you, you, you mentioned two brands before, and the bacon has the right color. You know, it's pink. So it's one additional proof that you can perfectly produce now, you can perfectly produce pink, nice bacon without using the da uh, uh, dangerous carcinogen. Indeed. But let's say you have a lot, you have sausages, you have uh, uh, rillette. In my, in, let's say in France now, since this uh, issue has been raised a few years ago um, through film, book, and so on, it has had an enormous traction. You know, there was an, a large parliamentary commission that really just published one month ago required for a total ban on nit nitrite. And I really expect that now that the cat is out of the bag in the UK and that the uh, British consumers will read the book and will understand what is what is at stake and they will just stop feeding dangerous sausages to their kids i think it's they will make the choice i think that's right the book is winning rave reviews reads like a detective story unraveling a conspiracy against the eaters of the world how long have we had these uh, nitrites in our food nitrites um, in the uk it's very interesting i i devote one full chapter in the book to explain in what very bizarre conditions the nitrites were allowed in the UK, because the health ministry was against it, absolutely against it. And it was adopted basically on the day uh, that the, the Second World War was declared, because the US manufacturers, manufacturers said to uh, Anthony Eden and to the British government at this time, said, OK, look, the day Hitler will invade Denmark, you will have no Danish bacon anymore. We can feed you a lot of bacon, but you have to take our bacon. It's nitrite treated. And the day the, 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 the war was declared, the British government signed an act to allow nitrite in the bacon. Pretty, and pretty extraordinary. I mean, it sounds like a huge miscarriage of justice and we have all paid the price. Uh, the book is fascinating. It's out now. Uh, it's getting amazing reviews. It's called Who Poisoned Your Bacon Sandwich? The Dangerous History of Meat Additives by Guillaume Coudre. It's out now on Kindle. And of course, you can buy a hard, a hard, uh, hardback copy as well.